the franchise that made me fall in love with action RPGs and the unique style of living and breathing open world. I feel like the whole franchise in general would be a lot more popular and widely know if the ex-publisher Joe Wood didn't force Piranha Bytes to release Gothic 3 when it was clearly not ready. The situation alone damaged the Gothic IP reputation a lot. Piranha Bytes did the best thing not too long after that and went separate ways, but unfortunately Joe Wood had the license for Gothic back then. Specifically, they had the rights to develop the fourth game and the expansion, but when they were done, the license went back to the rightful owner, Piranha Bytes of course. Not to mention that the fourth game Arcania was a poor attempt of a sequel and it was a final nail in the coffin. Mike Hogg, the co-founder of Piranha Bytes, had this to say back then. For us, it seemed to be a win-win situation, said Hog of the impact of Arcania, a gothic tale, because we knew we would get the brand back. We thought, okay, scenario 1, they do a good game and it furthers the brand. Scenario 2, they fail and everyone knows why. I don't really have to repeat what scenario happens. Fun fact about Mike Hogg, he's actually the face of the nameless hero from gothic games. Anyway, people were once again really pissed off that another game that had the gothic title in it failed to deliver, big time. Arcania was really linear with little to no RPG aspects. In my personal opinion, the game itself would not be that bad if it didn't have the gothic title in it. The gameplay was kinda enjoyable and different somehow, the world was uninspiring, not anywhere close to the likes of gothic games and the story and the characters were really bland. When the whole fiasco with the fourth game was done, Piranha Bytes got the license back in 2011. That was great news, but everyone was wondering, now that they have the license back, will they develop another gothic game and more importantly when? But back then Piranha Bytes had their teeth deep in Reason 2 Dark Waters. First Reason game came out in 2009 and it had a good reception in general, except the Xbox 360 port that was really bad since it was their first game they developed for any console. The PC version looked and played really good, the island of Faranga reminded me of Corinus a lot. Not just the map, but the whole game had the back to the roots feel to me and the reviews in general were quite positive. When Reason 2 came out in 2012, I abandoned all hope for the Reason franchise and I immediately hoped that the next game will be another gothic. I mentioned this a couple of times before in my videos, but if this is the first video you're watching from my channel, I'll just say that Reason 2 in my opinion is the worst game Piranha Bytes ever did. A few fast reasons, they changed the settings and the lore for 360 degrees, yet you're somehow the same character from the first game, they made the gameplay far worse, the skills were boring, the map with a few small islands was disappointing, etc etc. After that, I didn't have high hopes for Reason 3 at all, to say the least. Before it came out in 2014, there were some pretty good trailers from Piranha Bytes, especially the one called Reason 3 Three Factions. It promised back to the roots feature, three factions that you can join and it was mentioned to be the biggest game that Piranha Bytes ever made. I played around 25 hours when it came out and I can't actually remember why I stopped, but I'll return to it eventually. My impressions for this game were pretty positive. It was leagues better than Reason 2 for sure, but a lot of time it felt painfully mediocre to me. I won't claim anything until I play the game again since my memory is really clouded when it comes to Reason 3. And we came to the last game that Piranha Bytes released in late 2017 and that's Elex of course. I honestly didn't know what to expect. Post-apocalyptic setting was not that appealing to me, but I was still excited because it was a new IP from Piranha Bytes. Objectively, it turned out to be the best game from Piranha Bytes since Gothic 2, subjectively since Gothic 3 if you ask me. Don't ask me. If you want to hear my thoughts about the game, you can check this review I did and also I have a lot of guides and tips videos for Elex. Ok, so Elex is out, does that mean that we're gonna get a new gothic game, you may ask? Nope, because the sequel is developing as we speak actually. And I'm almost 100% sure that we will get Elex 3 as well, since all of their games so far were trilogy, remember? Gothic 1, 2 and 3, Reason 1, 2 and 3, and since we are getting Elex 2 for sure, there's probably going to be Elex 3 judging by this logic, but we'll see. So if that's true, we can only expect the next gothic if they will even develop another gothic somewhere around 2026. Why then? Well, since the first reason they spent around 3 years for every game that came after it. First reason came out in 2009, 
second in 2012 and the third one in 2014. Ilex came out three years after Reason 3 in 2017. You get the picture. The only gap of two years was the one between Reason 2 and Reason 3. If that trend continues, by the time they are done with Elex 3, we'll be in 2023. Three more years and we get the new Gothic. This of course may be entirely wrong, but even if there is no Elex 3 in the future, we can't get another gothic game until 2023. Sounds really sad, right? Or what's even sadder, what if they decide not to make another gothic game at all? I think that would be really stupid since they have a huge amount of people that would get hyped as hell for another gothic game and if done properly they can get back on the map and make a lot of money. But it can be a big risk as well and I think they really don't want to make it if they are not sure that it can be on the pair with other gothic games in the past. I get a headache just thinking about this. I don't know about you, but we can for sure say nobody wants to see another bad gothic title. I would rather let the developers do it when they feel like it can be done. I've seen a lot of people complain about this, not just for the gothic franchise but for other games too, comments like why don't you give the players what they want. Try to put yourself in the situation as the developer, when you're working on something that you have passion for and someone is pressuring you to do something different. Let's say you fall under the pressure and start doing that other project you're without a doubt going to lose the passion and work just because you're told to do it and not because you actually want that. Me personally, I would like to see this kind of passion for another gothic title. Dieses Spiel haben soll. Das heißt also, die Vision von dem Spiel formuliert erstmal, was ist es denn überhaupt? Ja, und wo wollen wir hin? Damals bei Gothic 1 hieß es irgendwie, wir wollen das geilste Spiel machen, was es jemals gegeben hat. Und das war so der Plan. Und es sollte ein Rollenspiel sein und irgendwas mit Charakteren und äh, Third Person und so. Und diese ganzen Spielinhalte, die kamen erst später dann dazu. Es war ein bisschen chaotischer, als es äh, heutzutage läuft. Ja, es war we know for sure that Elex sold really well for a studio that small and we can expect more games for Piranha Bytes. Hopefully with more polish, but more importantly, the design philosophy that we all know and love. See you next time.